In addition to saving money and being more fuel efficient, what do you see as the primary benefit of installing an updated system? Well, it's like anything when you bring something new into your home, you have the reliability and you don't have to be concerned about the thing going out in the middle of the night. And how long can a homeowner expect a system like this to, to function in their home? This should last the entire time that you're in your home. Well, that seems worthwhile. Now, I've been hearing a lot of buzz in the news lately about these home energy analysis. What is that? Well, that's energy auditing, Kristen. And we train the guys here. It's a BPI certification. And uh, it's to show what is going on with your home. What does an audit like this involve? Well, it takes three or four hours, and the audit technician will go up into your attic and go in your basement and check everything out and install a fan and will move air through your building and find air leaks. And then once you find the problems, then you can go through and fix everything. Yeah, we'll make an action plan for you to solve uh, at your building. And if you do the audit update and you install new equipment with that, you, you can save up to 50% on your oil bill, energy bill. I currently have a business located in Freeport, Doghouse Heating and Plumbing, and in that business I currently look at homes on a daily basis. So through this weatherization energy audit program, I'm able to help consumers button up their homes so that they can save energy. Most Mainers will be able to benefit from an energy audit through savings, through the reduction of heating oil. Uh, when they button up their homes, there can be some issues with indoor air quality, which can be overcome by weatherization and some other types of equipment. Well, when we bought this home, we knew that it was built in 1940, so we looked into getting a home energy audit because we knew that we probably needed to have some upgrades in terms of insulation, air sealing, and maybe even looking at upgrading the existing heating system. The home energy audit was uh, fairly quick um, and the, the auditors came in, uh, walked through our home, through the basement, uh, looked in the attic um, and it was a pretty quick process. The conclusions from the energy audit were that uh, our heating system was uh, fairly outdated. It was an old steam system and uh, we uh, had deficient uh, insulation in our attic. After having the audit done, we took their advice and we went and we um, further insulated our attic and we upgraded our existing heating system to forced hot water. It was steam. And where we were consuming about 1,200 gallons of fuel per year for a 1,200 square foot house, we're now only consuming about 400. So we've saved a lot of money and we can use that for things that are more fun for the family. We were most excited about the amount of money that we're saving due to the new system and conserving so much fuel usage. But we're also feeling really good about the fact that we're conserving a lot of fuel and being more friendly to the environment. All right, well, you have been such a good sport in letting me take you out of class. I know you need to go. But if somebody wants information on current classes that are available at MTEC, what's the best way? They should go to our website. Our schedule is uploaded on the site and that's MainEnergyMarketers.com. All right, back to class for you. Okay. Hi, I'm here with money saving tip number three. Cleaning your radiation is a very important thing to do. The cover lifts off as such. A small brush can be used to clean the dust, cat hair and other dirt and debris that might be in there. A clean system will transfer heat more efficiently, which saves money. Also, the same brush can be used on your hot air grills if you have a hot air system. If you believe that fossil fuels are stagnant, impervious to modern research, and really incapable of making change, then I think you'll be surprised to learn about the incredible advances taking place in the field of biofuels. Here to tell us more is the man responsible for introducing biofuels to our state of Maine, Joel Glatz. Hi, Joel. Hi. So thanks so much for talking with me today. Sure. Now, I understand that you've been working in this field for a number of years. How did you get your interest in biofuels? I was a heating oil delivery company owner for many, many years, and biodiesel just seemed like a perfect place for me to go uh, for my company. All right, well, what exactly is biofuel? Biofuel can encompass a number of different things, uh, including uh, ethanol, biodiesel, and other industrial oils. Um, primarily what we're focused on here is the biodiesel part. Yeah. All right, so this, this fuel source, is this something that I can use to heat my home? Is it something that I'm going to use to fill my car tank? You can do both. You can, you can heat your home as well as, as run your car if you have a diesel car. All right, now is this a renewable energy source? 
Yes, yeah. It's made from animal fats, from recycled restaurant oils, from seed oil like soybeans or canola. Um, so any biological oil can be used to make biodiesel. Main Standard Biofuels was founded in 2006. Uh, our model is to collect waste vegetable oil from all the restaurants in the greater Portland area and recycle it into biodiesel. Currently we collect from over 100 restaurants in the greater Portland area. Um, before we started collecting, most of the oil was shipped out of state. So it feels really good to be able to collect a local resource, turn it into an alternative fuel, um, and fuel homes and vehicles right here in Maine. Well, we've always tried to uh, uh, be environmentally conscious. We uh, got together with a group called Clean Air, Cool Planet back in, I think it was 2004, and they gave us some ideas about we might, what we might do, one of them being the use of biofuel in our fleet. And since that time, we've used over 1.4 million gallons of biofuel. Ochres has always had a strong commitment to the community and to the environment. And in order to uh, promote that, uh, we've gotten involved in projects such as the use of biofuel, solar panels, etc., in order to lower our carbon footprint. It's a strong belief that my family holds uh, that we contribute back to our communities and, and do uh, the right thing as far as the environment's concerned. So it, it played into our, our corporate image uh, that goes back many, many, many years. All right, so you introduced this product to the state of Maine. Is it taking off? Is there a future here for biofuel? Yeah, yeah, there's a big future for biofuel, especially in Maine where we use so much heating oil. All right, well, thank you so much for talking with me today, Joel. Thank you. If you're anything like me, your curiosity has been piqued. So I think we're going to head across town to Gorham now and speak with the people at Biofine. So here we are now at Biofine in Gorham to talk with Steve Fitzpatrick to find out a little more about what's happening behind the scenes in biofuels. Hi, Steve. Thanks so much Hello. for having me today. Good morning and welcome. Thank you. So you are a biorefinery facilities development company. What does that mean? Yeah, uh, Biofine uh, has developed an exciting new technology for conversion of biomass into a range of chemicals and fuels. And we're particularly focusing on the fuels market for Maine. All right, now looking around, you have quite a bit of equipment here. What's the process look like? This is a, a biorefinery. We're refining biomass much in the same way the oil industry refines crude oil. We're taking this uh, abundant resource and we're converting it with this biorefinery into a range of uh, fuels and uh, also chemicals. All right, when you talk about an abundant resource, what is the actual raw material going into the end product? Well, we can use a range of raw materials. In Maine, we're particularly interested in uh, forest residues. Obviously, we have Maine is famous for its forests, and uh, we can take the forest wastes, uh, or we can take municipal waste or waste paper, or waste from uh, pulp mills, paper sludge, uh, we can take a range of, of uh, waste materials and convert them into liquid fuels. And then the liquid fuel that is the end result, what can we, what can we do with that? What's, you know, what's that liquid fuel uh, can go into a range of different products. In particular, in Maine, we're focusing on heating oil. Uh, we can blend that, heat, that uh, liquid fuel with heating oil or with biodiesel. It's very compatible with the products that people now use in their homes. And most people in Maine, of course, use heating oil to uh, heat their homes. Yeah, it gets a little chilly here in the winter. Yeah. Now, obviously, you can choose to put this facility anywhere in the country. Why is Maine a particularly good fit? Is our government proactive in this area? Yes, they are. They're very supportive. They're very interested in what we're doing. They want to use Maine's resources. Uh, here in Maine, you have the abundant forest resources. You also have a huge market for heating oil. There's a great deal of interest in uh, for people in, uh, in using uh, liquid fuels to, to heat their homes. Uh, and in particular, from an, on an industrial scale, uh, you have uh, a somewhat declining paper industry. We can move straight into those paper mills. We can use all the infrastructure that's now uh, not being used, uh, that was established by the paper industry. We can move right in and we can uh, actually pretty much uh, uh, replace the uh, pulp and paper operations that Maine was once famous for. And of course we hope that Maine will now become famous for uh, producing um, heating oil from uh, resources. Great, well this is actually very fascinating. Thank you so Thank much you. for talking with me today. You. If you'd like some more information on biofuels and the companies in the state that are providing this product, you can go to a website. It's MaineEnergyMarketers.com. Just click on the Consumer Resources button. Hi, I'm here with money saving tip number four. We're at the thermostat. The thermostat controls the temperature in the house for your comfort. But when you're asleep or away at work, it doesn't need to be quite as warm as when you're home. So with a programmable thermostat, 
It will automatically turn the temperature down at those times when you don't need it to be warm and save you as much as 5% on your heating costs. the show we've been learning quite a bit about the current state of oil heat in Maine, but what does the future look like for this energy source? To find out, Roger Marin, an expert in the field, has agreed to come out on this beautiful day to take a walk with me along the Portland headlight. Hey Roger, how are you? Good, how are you Chris? Good, thanks so much for agreeing to come out here today. Now I've introduced you as an expert in the field, do you mind sharing some of your background? Sure, uh, as an energy expert and working in the heating equipment sector, we look at Department of Energy National Lab studies where efficiency is, comes from, where it's used in your home, and how to deliver that more effectively. A lot of these studies identify a lot of those factors, as well as field studies that can help reinforce what works and how, how to do that best. All right, well, I'd say you're very well qualified then to answer this next question. It is Maine State policy to reduce CO2 emissions by 30% by the year 2020. Do you think that's a realistic goal? It's a realistic goal today. You don't even have to wait that long. And the reason is because these lab studies also identify we can save 25, 30, 40 percent, as well as field studies that support that. Tremendous opportunity based on equipment. And one of the reasons is because from an efficiency standpoint, if you go into your boiler room and it's hot, a lot of energy gets wasted. And that's not accounted for in today's standards. So by looking at better ways to deliver that energy, you can keep your boiler room cold, for example, by having the right type of technology. And that puts more heat into your home and can save those kind of great, uh, great areas. So and efficiency then really is the key to reaching this goal. I'd say efficiency is definitely the cornerstone of this. You look at different areas and say where else could we get 40% in a new fuel, it would be very difficult to do. But we can do that today in energy efficiency. Alright, well let's talk a little bit about hybrid technology. Do you find that this combined effort has a future here with the Mainers as far as heating their homes and their businesses? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, solar thermal can produce about over half actually of your hot water needs. So from that standpoint, uh, you can build most of it in from sunshine and what you can't get from there, use a high performance system to back it up. And you can boost that 40% up to over 50% savings. All right, let's look 10 years out then. What does the future look like for oil heat in Maine? Well, in addition to something like a 50% savings, so we're really doubling our fuel supply. We can also look at things like uh, biofuels to reduce greenhouse gas emission. Those blends are here today. And we can also look at low sulfur fuels, which allow the equipment to run much cleaner longer. And that allows us to squeeze more energy out of the fuel and develop new technologies that can also push that envelope a little bit farther than we can today. All right, so in your opinion, is the future bright when it comes to oil heat in the state? It's a great future, and it's going to bring a balance to our energy needs for our country. And oil heat's got a great opportunity to do that. And we're on the right track to introduce these, these new uh, technologies to make that happen as fast as possible. All right, great. Thank you so much, Roger, for talking with me and taking the time. You've actually renewed my hope when it comes to oil heat in Maine. Excellent. Hello. I'm here with money-saving tip number five. We're at the furnace. It could be a boiler if someone has a, a water heating system. The things that need to be done are changing the tank filter, which is at the tank, changing the pump screen, which is here, and the nozzle, and then cleaning the unit and then performing a combustion test in order to ensure that it runs efficiently, which in fact will save you money. Well, I'm really sorry to say, but that is all the time we have for today. I hope that the information that we have covered in this episode of Local Discovery, a spotlight on Maine's energy, has you feeling excited about the many ways you can save money and start conserving fuel right away. I know that I'm feeling a lot better about my choice for home heat. Now, if you'd like any information on the topics that we've covered today, you can go to the Maine Energy Marketers Association website. It's MainEnergyMarketers.com. Or if you'd like to watch the program that you've just seen for a second or maybe even a third time, go to our website. It's LocalDiscovery.tv. Just click on a Spotlight on Maine's Energy button and you'll have all of this information ready and available to you. Right now, I'm off in search of more great truths when it comes to our options here for heat in Maine. I'm Kristen Martin. Thank you so much for watching this edition of Local Discovery, a Spotlight on Maine's Energy.